Hey folks, in this video, I'm gonna challenge myself to compose a short piece of music and sort of document it along the way so that you can see what my personal composition process is like. Step one, always sharpen your pencil. A new piece. Probably the hardest thing about composing is setting your parameters. I've always had better luck when I composed something with a specific goal in mind. For example, compose a melody that fits over the chord progression from Autumn Leaves. If you're indecisive like I am, this is really the hardest thing about composing. I want to compose something that's 16 measures long, and I would like it to go through three key centers, C, B flat, F sharp or G flat. So C, that's a C major seven, B flat, B flat major seven, and F sharp. Oh, see, that's kind of nice. Well, there's a couple things I could do. If I'm gonna do C, B flat, and F sharp as my key centers, I could put chord progressions on top of them. Let's say, I don't know, I'll pick some random ones. Let's see what happens if I plug in six, four, one over all three of those key centers. So six in C major would be A, four would be F, and one is C. That's kind of nice. Now to the key of B flat, so six would be G. Four is E flat. G flat, the six would be E flat minor, four is B, and one is B, uh, G flat. Now for some reason I started playing it kind of with like a funky groove like I think that's because that chord progression six four one is something that I've heard a lot in pop tunes and for whatever reason that's just the groove that popped into my head. Okay, I'm, I don't know if I want to do that right in succession. I don't know, let's try a different chord progression. I like chord progressions that don't always resolve on the one, that, or maybe that never even play the one, so like two, four, two, four, five, I don't know. Maybe I'll try that one in the G flat. And So in the key of G flat major, the two is A flat minor seven, the four is B major, B major seven, flat dominant seven. Two, four, two, four, five. Six, four, one in C. Then six, four, one in G flat. Ooh, that's nice. Basically, I used to luck into compositions. Now I try to use my intuition and my knowledge together to come up with things that interest me and my sense of melody. Two four two four five. I'm gonna put that in parentheses. But I do like the six four one six four one six four wait six four one. I don't know. Composing, by the way, is a series of yes or no questions, right? You play something, you think, hmm, yeah, or you think, hmm, no. And right now, that 24245 two, thing that I just wrote down and tried playing, I'm kind of, eh. Maybe it should just be 24241. Two, I don't know.
That's two four two four one in the key of B flat. set those chords in stone. A minor 7th, F major, C for four bars, and then the next four bars, E flat, and then B, G flat major 7, or F sharp major 7. One of the main yes or no questions that I think of when I'm composing is, can I remember it? Something that sticks in my ear generally is something that I like. But then the other step is, after it's been stuck in your head for a while, does it get annoying? And then my overarching philosophy of composition and improvisation is, what do I feel like hearing right now? Right? Am I getting? Are there any sounds that I've been hearing for a while that I'm getting sick of and I would like something different? Same thing goes for rhythms. So now I'm gonna try some of my like singing exercises. transposed very pentatonic and then on the G flat whatever there was a part of me that thought you know it might be kind of fun to borrow from the minor mode for just a split second and instead of playing A play an A flat so okay so now I have to set a parameter for the melody do I want something really lyrical really singable to do something that has like some cool lines with wide intervals. The thing for me is that I will write something if it takes me a long time to remember it or I'm not able to sing it then I just I generally just lose patience with it and I don't like it I'm very much a fan of singable melodies and this is my personal taste and this is the thing where your personal taste will have to come in too you have to decide what you want your audience to experience when they're hearing your song do you want them to feel uncomfortable do you want them to have sort of a hiccupy rhythmic feel do you want them to just be sitting there basking in the harmonic glory of your chord progression there's all kinds of emotional attachments people get to melodies and of course it's very subjective but you're the composer whatever you think a jagged melody should sound like that's your ultimate opinion and whatever you think a uh, smooth or lyrical melody should sound like that is ultimately your opinion and whatever rings in your inner ear and satisfies your musical needs the most is what's going to be your best composition and your most honest and personal composition things you can do to develop your melodies is to use repetition, right? Repetition is what makes a melody a melody. You're teaching the audience how to sing your song. But if you want your melody and your piece to be memorable, you have to have something that they can latch on to in the melody. Basically, I'm going to use that same idea, the same melodic contour, this thing with a half step, and then a large leap, and then, 
an arpeggio of some kind downward, even though it's not built the same way. So here I had it, I had it on the fifth, and it just went down the arpeggio. If I do it here on the E flat minor, I'm actually kind of doing it over the, the G flat major chord, so it's slightly different. So. comes in because the rhythm is the same in both. We have so the rhythm is what gives that melody a, a coherent structure. Contrasting melody over the same chord. So the first one will have this. Actually, I like that. So you have like this. up and then it comes down in a way that's interesting with the other chords. That's the ninth on the minor. Ninth chord. I like that. There's obviously no right or wrong way to compose. But I will say this, the absolute best advice I can give you is to just write something. It's easy to change something that you've already written. It's easier to do that than it is to write something new. Give yourself some parameters. Set guidelines for yourself. Decide what chords you want to use, what key centers you want to play in, what kind of rhythm you might want to have. Is it going to be a pop tune, jazz tune, or do you want to try to force some of your theoretical knowledge into a tune? So I guess I'll play the, the final composition for you as best as I can. I'll overdub some vibraphone. So one, two, one, two, three. Hey folks, it's me from the future, just pausing that video from me from the past. Anyway, I did record my original song in Overdub Vibes, and it sounded horrible because my piano is really out of tune. So I just went ahead and made a full-on version here with drums, vibes, and synth bass. Oh yeah, one other thing. I had been sort of so-so on that 2-4-2-4-5 chord progression. I decided at the end, eh, what the heck, it's in the song now. So enjoy, this is my composition. It doesn't have a title yet. Feel free to give me suggestions for titles for this piece in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> 